5.3, the transfer of heat. Heat flows from hot to cold until both objects are at the same temperature. Again, heat flows from hot to cold. Whoops. So um, a lot of times, you know, in the winter, maybe you've left something open um, and you hear you're letting the cold air in. So is that a correct statement? You're letting the cold air in when heat flows from hot to cold. Well, this implies that cold moves to hot. Whereas we just remembered that hot, or sorry, learned that hot moves to cold. So this statement is incorrect and you can scientifically correct something, someone when they say it um, and say, we're actually letting the warm air out. There are three types of heat transfer that we're gonna look at in our course. The first one is conduction. Conduction is a transfer of heat by contact. So these objects must be touching. All right, so what is conduction or how does it work? Rather than just reading out what's on the page, I'm gonna to go to the next page and describe it in our diagram. So conduction, um, again, we have a pot on a electric burner. So there's actual physical contact between the pot and the burner here. So the burner is what heats up first. The particles in the burner, again, because it's a solid, they vibrate very quickly because they are hot. So they can move back and forth, but they stay within this one spot. They're moving quicker than the particles in the pot and in the water because the pot is cooler. So warmer objects are moving faster. And in this case, they're just allowed to vibrate in their spot. When the pot and the burner are in contact, Particles in the burner start to collide with particles in the pot. These slower particles in the pot begin to get kinetic energy from the burner. So these particles in the pot begin to move a little faster. Then they transfer their kinetic energy to the water in the exact same process. So um, we had particles of the burner, particles of the pot, and then remember there's water within this pot um, and their molecules will get the, their energy the exact same way. So when we heat water on the stove, the particles in the stove begin to vibrate quicker and they then in turn cause the particles within the pot to vibrate quicker, which then causes this water molecule, the water molecules in the pot to move faster. And that transfer of energy is how we get hot or boiling water. Convection is the transfer of heat by movement. Again, what I'm gonna do is take a look at the diagram on the next page and explain it from there. Here we have um, a burner, but no pot on top of it. We just see air on top. So heat from the burner is transferred to the air molecules that are touching the burner. Okay, and that process happens the same kind of idea as conduction. The particles in the burner begin to vibrate quicker and any more, uh, sorry, any um, air molecule touching the burner will also get energy transferred to it. So these molecules that are touching the burner begin to move faster and because it's a gas, they just start to move off into space. They start to move further apart. Warm molecules are further apart because they have more energy than colder ones. So the warm air becomes less dense than cold air. Something that is less dense, so let's say that this is our warm air, 
means that it has fewer particles per space. So if I draw the same size box that was supposed to be identical and this was cool air, it is more dense because there are more particles. So more dense because there's more particles. And again, the opposite would be true here. This is less dense, oops, because there's fewer particles. All right, so our warm air that's hovering above um, the hot plate here is le or less dense. So the warm air begins to rise. If it's less dense, it has less mass. Because it rises, cooler air comes and settles in because it's more dense and it begins to the process again. These cooler air molecules will become in contact with our hot plate and they will begin to move faster. They will become less dense because they are warmer. They will rise and cooler air will then again settle in on top. So convection is kind of like this heating of air, if you will, above the hot plate. Okay, so this is directly above. Our last type is radiation. This is the transfer of heat by electromagnetic waves. Okay, there is no contact required with the heat source and there are no convection currents. What this means is that your hand could be heated from the side of a burner. So if you're standing in front of a burner that's on, you can feel heat without actually putting your hand over top or even worse, on top of the burner. Um, so we could hold our hand to the absolute side of it and still feel heat. So that is not conduction because our hand is not on the burner. It's not convection because our hand is not above the burner. We are experiencing radiation. Let's take a look at the diagram. So our hand can be heated again by radiation. This is produced by vibrating electrons, which are present in all atoms. So the vibration of electrons from our hot plate here makes a wave called an electromagnetic wave or an infrared wave. This wave travels from the burner to our hand and when it hits our hand, this wave transfers its energy into the molecules of our hand, causing them to vibrate faster. So this wave is a way of transferring energy. Uh, whoops, transferring energy. So it takes the heat from the burner, turns it into a wave that has energy, which then strikes our hand and turns it back into heat. So a wave is a way of transferring energy. Again, this wave is created by the vibration of particles within our burner. This vibration of particles um, causes an, a wave to occur. There's some practice for this section on page one, or sorry, page 91 of your Ta Science Connect One textbook. I'd like you to take a look at number one, two, three, and four.